Square Enix Project Athia was intriguing since its initial announcement, eventually earning waves of mixed to negative reception as more news was revealed. Now that the game has been released and renamed Forspoken, these general reactions remain due to gameplay decisions and writing style choices, leaving an unmemorable impact. Forspoken follows protagonist Frey Holland, a New Yorker who has suffered as an orphan, never finding stability in her youth and constantly switching between foster homes. The opening segments depict her circumstances, emphasized by her repeated run-ins with the law, awful living arrangements, and lack of those she can emotionally confide in. Then, after Frey's apartment burns down, circumstances lead her to discover a cuff that whisks her off to the fantasy land of Athea. The Cuff, whom Frame aptly calls Cuff, can speak, and via a ton of exposition informs her of the world. Athea is in dire times due to a phenomenon known as the Break, taking away countless lives as the four leading rulers, known as the Tantas, agonize their people. Humanity is on its last legs, and Frey's sudden arrival puts her between a rock and a hard place. Her life back in New York was treacherous, and Athea's state is causing a borderline extinction. Still, she desires to go back home. Athea's people be damned. Unfortunately, the narrative and cast in Forspoken only become compelling in its late stages. Most characters suffer from a lack of provided basis of care for the player, aside from the collective predicament. In addition, many NPCs are not captivating in the most inherent of ways, making several scenes a bore to sit through. Frey, on the other hand, is a far more complicated case. She's a character who's essentially a reluctant hero, thrown into a situation she has no initial personal investment in, intensified by how Athea isn't exactly inviting. As a result, she consistently illustrates her annoyance with everything going on, and that's natural and understandable. But this trait becomes exhausting to witness the further one progresses, with the vast majority of Frey's lines coded in hatred, dismission, and the like. Regardless of its intention, it's just too much as it overrode the sympathy and empathy I was meant to be feeling during the more emotional scenes. However, I appreciated and even liked Frey's character writing in hindsight because of how the last quarter tackles her. It's difficult to explain without delving into spoiler-related material, still it does a great job highlighting her her personal struggles and why it has motivated her to act so selfishly, even though some of her words can never be amply justified. I'm fairly certain that Frey is a protagonist who is not intended to be likable. The writing approach of having the main character actively combat their responsibilities was fresh yet waned quickly. It wasn't until the final chapters that I felt reinvested. Not everyone will have the patience to play through the majority of a game though, and I wholeheartedly relate to that. There were several points where I was close to dropping it all together. This is surprising because the storyline is shockingly short, being less than 20 hours. So having the urge to stop playing with an experience this brief is not telling of high quality. The issues with the writing spread to how I absorb the lore. Athia contains countless passages players can read to learn more about the world's history, and a decent chunk of it is pretty interesting. Yet my engagement with the material slowly deteriorated as the title progressed because I lacked attachment to the cast residing within said world. I find it difficult to care about the history of a game world when there is little world building to latch onto. Regarding gameplay, Forspoken's combat is action focused, boasting a few distinct styles. For instance, Frey begins with projectiles that she can shoot in a few different ways making the experience almost akin to a third-person shooter. While melee usage is gained later on, these multiple avenues to approach fights alongside the skill tree and upgrade system offer a great deal of choice with one's playstyle. Sadly, the meager enemy variety, non-existent feedback when using the flame sword, and other specific faults made encounters monotonous. Although I should mention how bizarre this gameplay pacing is. Players only have access to the first tree of skills for a good chunk of the story, with the remaining skill trees and movesets being acquired close to one another. There's little time to familiarize yourself with these abilities unless you stick to side activities. The pacing is all over the place and is likely the result of either fundamental restructuring close to the launch or simply poor planning. 
Enemy designs is at least passable if a tad too simple, with the strengths of combat only really emphasized in the variety free boasts by the time the credits arrive. There always seems to be an if or a but whenever I express positivity about my time with Forspoken. This also extends to locales players can find in the world comprising enemy waves. Within these subterranean passageways, all players must do is defeat the foes they encounter across each room. The first few instances of these fights can be fun, still the practically identical structures, overabundance of similar enemies and even the two similar level designs leave far too much to be desired. They're essentially glorified arenas, which is disappointing because Forspoken does an inadequate job of implementing exploration. The maps lack memorable landmarks and features, and there are rarely any instances where navigation is not just an automatic ride. A few ideas, like water surfing, are excellent in concept, but they aren't exactly needed. As a result, exploring optional content felt more like a chore than I'd like to admit. Speaking of side activities, the quests are purely busy work, rarely boasting intrigue that makes it worthwhile outside gameplay-related rewards. Some gameplay elements seem tacked on with an oddly high number of quests, such as following cats around and nothing else. In the realm of voice work, the primary cast is stellar with Cuff's voice delivery being my favorite, thanks to his masterful tonal shifts. The antagonist's voice acting is standout as well, with their madness emphasized tenfold. Granted, the town NPCs and such are pretty weak by comparison, but considering their lack of memorability, I didn't mind it all that much. As for presentation, the critiques mentioned above of the world design still stick. However, I appreciated how Cuff communicated through the DualSense controller for a bit more personal touch. Forspoken is one of the most conflicting game experiences I've ever had. While its ending hours are compelling, the other 80% of the experience was amongst the most miserable I've been with any game, almost causing me to stop playing entirely. Unfortunately, no enhancement in quality via the later stages can compensate for that strife. Further, the questionable pacing of combat acquisition, with so many of the tools earned too close to each other, caused my interest in another fundamental aspect to flounder. Those who stick with Forspoken until the end may derive enjoyment from how certain elements were tacked on, like I did. Though, ultimately, it's all too little, too late. At the very least, exploring the open world and completing optional tasks after completing the story can be fun, albeit in brief doses, since there's not much intrigue within the environments. Noisy Pixel is giving Forspoken a 4.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Please read the full review at noisypixel.net. Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content. Noisy pixel.